Today we're going to be delving into creating dynamic before and after sliders. We're going to be using advanced custom fields, templates in Elementor Pro and Ocean WP and the Elementor widgets you can get as part of the Pro Bundle. If you're interested, stick around and I'm going to demonstrate how we can do everything right now. So before we take a look at how we do this, let's take a look at what we're actually going to do. You can see that we've got a before and after slider image. We can just use this to transition between the two different variations of the image. We've got a couple of options to control how that actually displays, and I'll take a look at that when we go through setting everything up. But this is all dynamically generated with advanced custom fields. If we scroll down, you can see we've got the title of this particular image, and we've also got some information about it. And we're gonna go through and see how we can style it in the same fashion that I've done here. So my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing, smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so we need those plugins already set up in store. So if you don't have them, I'd recommend going grabbing them. So we want ACF, we want Elementor Pro, we want to have Ocean WP as the theme, and we want the Ocean WP Elementor widgets. All the links to these will be in the description below. So once you've got those downloaded, installed, or configured, we're good to go. I've already done that, so let's just jump over to the dashboard now and take a look at how we started building this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create the custom fields that are going to hold the values for our before and after images. Now you can get more creative with this if you want to, but for this example, we're just going to create images. So we're going to come down to the custom fields option and we're going to come into the add new for a new field group. Once we've done that, we're going to give this a name and we'll call this before and after so we know exactly what we're talking about. Once we've done that, we need to come in and specify a few things. I've created a category now that'll just hold the values for my before and after images. So what I can do is I can come into the post type and I can change that to be post category. There's nothing different to this. This is just your normal post categories in WordPress. So I've done nothing more than that. So we can say equal to, and you can see before and after has popped up because it's the first one in there. If it's not, you can just choose it from the drop down list. So we've now set up the fact that these fields will only show if the post category is set to before and after. So now we just need to create the fields. So we click on add field, and we're just gonna call this before. We're gonna come down and we want this to be an image. So we're just gonna say we want image as the option. We can set things like required and all that kind of stuff we want to, but we can leave it as is for now. Scroll right the way down to the bottom, and we're gonna say add another field, and we're gonna do the same thing again, and we're gonna call this one after. You can see it'll pre-fill out the field name for us, and again, we're gonna come down and choose image as our option. And that's all we need to do. We've set up the custom fields that we want. You can configure this if you want to a little bit more, but for now, we just leave it as is. So we'll say publish. So that's created our new custom fields. So we just jump over now into our post section, and we'll go to all posts and we'll just create a new post which is gonna be using our before and after images. So we'll call this before and after test. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down, you can see at the moment our new custom fields are not displaying because we haven't assigned this to a particular category. All we need to do is come down, click on before and after, and you can see once we do that, it now opens up our new custom fields for the before and after options. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our before We'll just choose the image we want to use on there, which in this example is going to be the color image. We'll select that. You can see it shows as a nice preview. Add image again, and we're going to come up and we're going to choose the black and white version, and we'll click on select. So we've now created our before and after. We've given it a title. And if we want to put some descriptive text in, which we're going to use underneath the title, we can drop that in here. So I'm going to just add in a little bit of Laura Mipsum filler text for now as an example. So with our new before and after post all set up, we can now just click on publish. And the final thing we need to do is create the template inside Elementor Pro to then display this the way that we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to Elementor, we're gonna choose My Templates. Once we've clicked on there, we can now come in and create our new template. We're gonna create a single post template. So we're gonna click on Single, and we'll say Add New. So you can see Single is the option, select the post type, we're just gonna choose Post because we'll set up the parameter for when this template will be used after we've created it as the final step with the conditions. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to call this before and after single. I always like to sort of put single and archive and things like that in there. So if I'm looking through, I can see immediately what any of these templates actually refer to and where they're going to be used. So finally, let's just hit create template and then we can go in and start laying out the design. 
So once the Elemental loads in, we're good to go, and we can just start setting everything up. Now, I'm not going to use any of the templates on here. I'm just going to simply X out of this so we've got a blank page to work with. So the first thing we're going to do is drop in our before and after. So just to close these up a second, and we're going to come down to the Ocean Elements option. And what we're looking for is the Image Comparison or the Comparison, comparison option. That's for there, so we're just going to drag that over, drop that in there, and you can see now that pulls in the comparison options. So now we've got that in place, we can go through and start pulling in the dynamic information. Now you can see we've got this little dynamic symbol, so we can pull in dynamic info for the label and for the image itself, for the before and the after. Now I'm going to leave the dynamic information for the labels to before and after, that's perfectly fine for me. But if you wanted to, you could create dynamic fields using advanced custom fields, and then you could assign your own labels to both the left and the right hand side or the top and the bottom, depending on how you set this particular comparison up. We're just going to keep it really simple and we're just going to come to the image. So we're going to click on dynamic, come down to ACS image field. And once we're on there, we can now click on the little wrench icon and we can choose which key. In other words, which custom field we've created, we want to actually use to pull in our before and after images. So you can see there's our before and after, which is our advanced custom fields that you created. And then we've got before and after, which are the image fields. So we click on before and give it a second or two and you'll see that now loads that in. If we want to assign a fallback image, we can do that here, but we're not going to worry about that for this example. So that's that first part done. Come to the after image and repeat the process. So again, ACF fields, click on the wrench icon, choose the key, and this time we're going to choose the after option. And there we go. There's our before and after slider. We've got settings that we can go into if you want to. You can see we've got, we can adjust the visible ratio. We can adjust the orientation to be vertical or horizontal, depending upon the kind of comparison you want to apply. You've also got the option there for the move the slider. In other words, what method do you use to actually move that before and after slide bar? You can see we've got drag, which is the option we had on the demonstration at the beginning of the video. We've got mouse move, which as we move our mouse over it without the need to click, it'll show us. And finally, we've got the mouse click option, which will click or jump to wherever we click to. We'll leave it set to drag so we can just emulate exactly what the example looked like. You can see we've got the before and after labels, which is showing before and after. We can disable those or enable those, depending upon what you'd like to do. If you go to the style option, we can now go through and we can do things like we can style those labels if you want to. We can assign background colors, color to the text, typography, and so on. So that's quite nice. We can adjust those to get exactly what we want. The same with the handle, and again, the same with the separator. So we've got controls over all those things. What we're going to do is, though, is we're going to jump over to advanced. We're going to come down to our border, and we're going to do something really simple. We're going to set a 10-pixel white border all the way around. So we're going to say solid, and we're going to set, oh, not the border radius, 10 to the width. And we're going to set this to be white. So we're going to create that sort of film edge effect, which looks quite nice on this. And we're going to do a box shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in. We're going to increase the blur on there to get the effect that I want. And we'll drop the opacity down just to get a nice subtle effect. So it just looks like it's raised off the page slightly. So as you can see, very, very simple. Nothing complex about that at all. So now we've done that and got the image in place. Let's just get, take a look at how we can add in the extra bits of information, the text, the header, and so on. And then we'll take a look at demonstrating the end result. And we'll see what some of those different options look like with our test page. So let's just scroll down. Let's add in a new widget. We're going to put a full width box in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be a certain value. So I want this to be 800 pixels. And we're just simply going to come in and we're going to choose the single option because this will allow us to pull in data from the single post. So we're going to pull in the post title and drop that there. Next up, we're going to come back. We're going to choose we want the post content. We'll drop that in below the post title. And finally, we'll just come into our basics option and we're just going to drag in a little divider. So before we go any further, let's just add a little bit of space around this. We'll drop in some additional spacing around the box. So we'll come to advanced, uncheck all the options there so everything is linked together. And we'll just put 50 pixels top, 50 pixels bottom, just to give us a nice bit of breathing space. Come to our text heading and we'll just change that. Come into our line, we'll set that to be 10%. And we'll just set that to be a nice pale gray and we'll set it to be dotted and centered. So that gives us a nice little visual separation. We'll just change our typeface. So all these things are purely optional, but it gives you an idea of how quick you can come in and start to change all these different things. So we set that to Muli. Uh, I quite like that. And size wise, we'll get to about 
26 pixels and we'll just change the color on there make it a little lighter and finally we'll come into our typography and we'll set that to something like let's go for try 200 yeah that looks pretty good make it a little darker okay so there we go we can tighten things up on there, spacing and so on if we want to but i'm happy with that so let's just click on publish now once we choose publish we now get the option to set the conditions so what we're going to do is we don't want this to be all posts and all we want this to be in category and we want this to be before and after so let's just start searching for the before and there we go so what we're doing is we're now telling it to only use this template if the category is set to before and after so any posts that don't meet those criteria will just not use this template they'll use an alternative template so you click on publish and that's our template set up everything is done so what we're going to do is we're just going to come back over we're going to close this down we'll exit out of elementor and we'll come back into our post section and view all our posts and there's our before and after test so now this is going to use the new template that we've just set up so we click on view on there we can take a look and there's our before and after so you can see everything is set up and working all the styling is in place our before and after slider works perfectly so we can just have that lovely comparison so that's how easy it is to create this dynamic before and after comparison before i close this video down though let's just take a look at some of those other options on how we can have this slider work just come back in and we'll come back into our templates and we'll come back in and edit that template so before and after edit with elementor and let's take a look at some of those other options in action so let's just choose the before and after comparison and we're going to come down to the settings and this time let's just choose we'll change for the drag and we'll go for move mouse update our page our template come back in and refresh once you've done that you can see now i'm no longer clicking to drag this around i literally just take the mouse over the image and it'll automatically attach to my mouse pointer if i move outside it stops so there's another one of the options and finally if we come in and we just choose mouse click and we'll update again we'll then just jump back over refresh our page and you can see now nothing happens when I mouse over but if I click anywhere you can see it immediately jumps to exactly where my mouse pointer is being clicked and one final thing let's just change this back to vertical we'll change it to drag and we'll update and we'll see now we have a vertical option as opposed to the horizontal option so refresh the page and as you can see now we can do the horizontal version of it so very very easy so this is one of those things that if you are a photographer or you're a retouching artist or something like that and you want to have these before and after comparisons and you want to create a portfolio this is a great way of reducing the amount of effort that's going to be used when you want to add new content to your portfolio you can just use dynamic data create a simple post that has the before and after some descriptive information and a title and within seconds you can update your portfolio in a very visual and simple fashion well i hope you found the video useful if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down well let me know in the comment section why you didn't enjoy the video as always all of the links to all the different plugins and the software and everything that's used in this video are in the description below some of them are affiliate links so if you click on those and purchase through those links you give a small percentage back to the channel but it doesn't cost you any more money as always if you've got any comments questions or feedback on this video or anything you'd like to see covered in future videos please drop those in the comment section below i read everything you post and try to answer as many as possible well my name is paul c this has been wp tuts and until next time take care